If you find yourself using too much or too little of a product and never really know exactly how, where you should start or how much you should use, then just keep watching. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm a licensed hairstylist with over 20 years of experience. And on this channel, I use those 20 years of experience to help you have healthy, happy hair. So as the intro suggests, I'm going to be talking about how much product you should be using in your hair. First of all, though, before we get started, let's give a shout out to day five hair. I actually, this is not how it normally looks on day five. I just did a refresh and I did a video on that refresh. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to come out before or after this. So yes, there will be a couple of videos where I'm wearing the same clothes and my hair looks the same because I filmed this on the same day. Let's get back to what you came here for, and that is to find out how much styling product you should be putting in your hair. So I know that it would be complete music to your ears if I could just sit there and say, you need to use X amount of product, whatever the product is, that to make it just that simple and say, if you have this, use this amount. Um, unfortunately, there are way more factors that go into it as with anything hair related. Uh, because there are so many variables. There's your hair density, there's your texture, so fine versus coarse, there's the length of your hair, there's the product itself, the different types, and even within the di different types of products, the consistencies can be vastly different from one product to the next. Um, so there's just a lot that goes into it. So while I cannot give you a hard and fast, use exactly this amount, which would be great, I will give you some guidelines or hacks to help you to better regulate the amount of product that you're using or to accurately estimate how much you're gonna need of a product before you start using it so that you don't use way too much or way too little. Now, one of the hair hacks that I've seen out there for determining how much product to use is to grab your hair and to put your fingers loosely around it and then slide down through and that is how much product you should use for that amount of hair that you grabbed. So with me, it would be just that one section of hair. With my whole hair, it would be a lot more than that. Um, so whatever size section of hair that you grab, that's how much you need for that section. And then you would need the same amount or do the same thing for another section. And my thoughts on that hack are, well, that's a good place to start. But there's a couple of things that that doesn't take into account. So like that shows you your density, which is really good. Um, you need to know that for sure, but you also need to know your texture. So fine versus coarse or somewhere in between. And then also the length of your hair is going to change that amount. Like if you used, if you went like this and determined that that's how much that you needed, but your hair was collarbone length or shorter and you know, long enough to get it into a ponytail like that. So somewhere between that length and your collarbone, if you were to go to use that amount, that would probably be too much because of the length of your hair. If you have really fine hair and you went to go use that much, that would also probably be way too much for your hair. So I would say anything as far as length goes in between being able to gather it up into a ponytail and collarbone length, you would have to start with that amount figure out that amount with your density, figure out the density and decrease it slightly. And then if your hair is somewhere between the collarbone length and bra strap length or mid back um, or upper back, kind of somewhere around here, um, if your hair is within that range, then that amount that you come up with is probably gonna work very well. And then if your hair is longer than that point, you're gonna have to increase probably every four to six inches past that that your hair is um, just to make sure that you have enough to cover all of your hair. Okay, so then now that you've adjusted for your length, you're also gonna have to adjust for the texture of your hair, fine versus coarse or somewhere in between. If you're on the coarser end of the spectrum, you could most definitely use that um, amount that you have come up with between the density and the length and that would probably be fine, or even just a tad bit more. Coarser, thicker hair really doesn't get weighed down very easily, so you could very easily use that amount or slightly more and be fine. Conversely, if you're on the finer end of the spectrum, you're gonna wanna decrease the amount that you have come up with between your density and your length and use even less. Now, if your hair is in between fine and coarse, then you can use the amount that you've come up with between your 
uh, density and your length and use either exactly that amount, uh, that amount or you can kind of slide it in one direction or another. Um, your porosity may come into play here too. If your hair is more porous, and this is for all the way across the board, whether you have fine or coarse hair, the more porous your hair is, it can take a little bit more product and sometimes needs a little bit more product. If it needs more of the protein, if it needs a little bit more of the moisture, then you would increase a little bit for porosity. So as porosity goes up, you can increase slightly the amount that you're going to use as porosity goes down. You could um, use a little bit less. But again, it also depends on how weighed down your hair typically gets with products and it depends on the products themselves too. So when you're looking at a product, trying to determine if you can use your adjusted amount exactly as it is, or if you need to adjust it further and either use a little less or use a little bit more, a good way to do that is to go ahead and put the product on your hand and first of all, see how it kind of comes out and if it stays really stiff like that, it's a lot thicker. And oftentimes these thicker ones like this tend to be heavier. Um, so just kind of run that around and get a good feel for it in between your fingers, feel it on your hands. If it feels like it leaves a coating on your hands, feels a little bit heavier on your hands, then it's probably going to be pretty heavy on your hair. If it feels more watery, a lot lighter weight, kind of doesn't feel like much of anything after you work it around into your hands, then you're not, then it's going to do the same thing on your hair. So it's not going to be super heavy. So that is where you start. So if it's something that feels pretty heavy on your hand and if you have the type of hair that weighs down pretty easily or you notice that your hair gets weighed down pretty easily, then if you're using a product like that that feels heavier on your skin, you're going to want to use a little bit less than the adjusted amount that you came up with. But if you happen to have, you know, coarse thick hair and uh, it doesn't get weighed down very easily. You can either use that adjusted amount that you've come up with or you can use a little bit more if you need it. Uh, if you have high porosity hair and it feels pretty moisturizing like this is really moisturizing. It feels really moisturizing on my hand right now. You could use a little bit more of that if that's what your hair needs. So you can adjust it according to that. But the biggest thing you're going to want to look for is just how it feels on your hand. If it's heavy there, it's going to be heavy in your hair. Um, and if your hair can't take heavy products, then you're going to want to either use quite a bit less or you might not want to use that product at all. It might be a little bit too much for your hair. Now, I was ta just talking about creams. However, gels will be similar. They will have different textures. And again, if it feels really, really heavy on your skin, really thick and heavy and doesn't like separate all out or kind of disappear. It's going to feel thicker and heavy also on your hair. It's going to coat your hair a lot more. Um, thinner watery gels. You can have thinner watery gels that are firm hold and I absolutely happen to love those even though um, I don't have to worry about my hair getting weighed down by them. I still like the watery gel because I find them easier to, to distribute throughout my hair and I just I like them the best to be quite honest. Um, but I don't mind thicker gels like this. This is definitely a thicker gel when it comes out. In either case, the thick or the thinner watery gels, putting it on your hand is still going to show you what it feels like as you move it around and work it around and it kind of starts to dry and you feel what you're left with on your hands, that how heavy or how coated your hair, your hands feel is going to translate also to your hair. Um, so you're going to want to, again, adjust in the same way that you do with the creams. The heavier hair, the heavier it is, if your hair gets weighed down easily, you're going to want to decrease the amount that you use. Um, the lighter weight it is, you can use the amount that you've come up with. Uh, you know, if you have hair that doesn't get easily weighed down, then you can just use the amount that you came up with, your adjusted amount. So that is how you make a determination for creams, for gels, even leave-ins. Leave-ins are the same way. So mousse can be a problem. You can still figure it out the same way by just trying to get a small amount on your hand, spreading it around, seeing how it is. Same thing with foams, and there is a difference. Foams are a little bit less dense. The mousses are more dense. Um, you spread it around, you see how it disappears, how it feels. If it's, again, waterier, lighter weight, and doesn't leave too much of a coating, you don't have to use as much. 
And if it actually does leave a little bit more of a film or a coating or feels heavier, then you use less. But that can be hard to translate because you put a little bit in there and it grows. So after you've determined whether or not it's a little bit lighter or if it's a little bit more heavy, then try, then start with smaller blobs of it and see how far that gets you when you're coating your hair with it to spread it throughout. The nice thing about mousses is that most of them are not heavy. They are actually really good for fine hair. They tend to be a lot more lightweight. They tend to be volumizing and um, are pretty darn good for fine hair overall. Yes, there are exceptions to that as there are exceptions to everything, but for the most part, mousses generally tend to be more lightweight. So the biggest thing there is just making sure that you're not using so much that it's like you've created this like really crispy, crunchy ramen noodle thing going on. Although you can just scrunch that out and then you're good to go. So with the mousses, you're just gonna have to play around with those a little bit more than um, with some of the others just because of the nature of the mousse. Um, but just always start with a small amount and go from there. And I would even recommend that with anything else. Like I'm giving you a guideline as to what you can start with or about the amount that would work really well. And you can always use a little bit less than that and then go from there, depending on how your hair feels. And one of the other things that can kind of like throw the whole thing off and even for someone like me who's been doing hair for as long as I have, and I can fairly accurately gauge you by, you know, a product's feel and what the product is and what the client's hair is in front of me, I can fairly accurately gauge exactly how much product that I need to use on their hair or how much I need to use on mine. However, sometimes products will sometimes throw a monkey wrench into everything. I'm looking at you in shower style fixer. Um, by being super, super concentrated, which this is. And that can be hard to know before you start using it. That's something that you have to figure out as you're using it. Um, however, they give you a little bit of hint on this tube when they say to use it with lots of water or when your hair is really soaking wet. I think that's what they actually say, is to use it when it's soaking wet. That usually clues you into the fact that you need to dilute this because it is really concentrated because otherwise putting product into really wet hair does dilute it quite a bit. So in most cases, products will say to use on damp hair. However, in the ones where it says to use it on really soaking wet hair, like this one even has it in the title, like in shower. So in the shower, super wet hair, they want you to dilute it because it is concentrated. So that can kind of clue you into the concentration reading it. And even though I read that, I still overused it <laughs> because it is just that concentrated. So I learned my lesson on that one. Um, you know, that happens. So that is how you determine whether or not something is super concentrated. And then moving on. So I'm going to talk about what it should feel like when you're putting the right amount of product into your hair. So when you put products into your hair, for the most part with creams especially, your hair is gonna feel slimy-ish. Um, not super slimy, but it's gonna feel seaweedy slimy, kind of like what it does with conditioner in there. Of course, this depends on the cream. All creams are different, but for the most part, it tends to feel more slimy, more softened, and you want to feel that. You want it to feel like you actually have something on there, not like it's just your naked hair. However, you don't want it to get super slimy or really kind of gunky feeling. And it's hard to, I can't describe what that feeling is when you've gone too far and you put too much in there, but it just feels kind of gunky and just really not good. Um, plus you'll go to like a brush through it and yes, you want your hair to kind of stick together and clump together, but you don't want it to like glue itself together into one big blob. Um, so there is a difference. So, and that's a good way to tell if you've put too much in there, you're brushing through it and it literally just all your whole, whatever you're brushing just sticks all together in one big, massive, clumpy blob that feels like it's kind of really glued together and not, you'll know. <laughs> it, it just, it feels really gross when you're running your hands through your hair. It feels gunky, it feels producty, it feels gross. And with gel, see the way that I typically apply products to my hair, I always layer because I find that I use less product overall. And that's the other thing that I would mention too, is that if you're layering, 
use less than that adjusted amount that you came up with because you're using multiple products. And sometimes you'll find that you need to use significantly less of each product because each product is addressing your uh, hair's specific need or uh, specific um, result. And therefore you will need less of each instead of using one product that doesn't quite cut it and you have to use a lot more in order to get your desired results. So if you're layering products, then definitely use a lot less of each product. Start off with a small amount, just go until you feel just a little bit on your hair and call it good. And then you continue on with your layering. Now, like I was about to say, I layer, typically I do a leave-in, a cream, and then a gel. And the gel basically just is there to smooth over the top and kind of coat the ends a little bit to hold the, defin the definition that I've already put in place by using the by using the brushing technique and the cream. So when I do apply that gel, what I'm looking for is just a very light coating on my hair. Like I want to be able to feel it sitting there on top of my hair and just coating it and keeping it in place and holding what I've already done. So that's what you're going to want to look for if that's the order that you put it in. If you only use gel or you don't use a cream before the gel and you use maybe gel first and then mousse second or something like that, then you want to feel your gel in your hair. It's probably not going to feel as slimy, seaweedy as like a cream is going to because gel typically has more hold to it than a cream is going to. So it'll feel definitely different. It has a different type of texture. So you're going to want to feel that gel coating on there, but not so much that it still, again, feels really producty and really kind of goopy in your hair. And then if you put a mousse in, especially if you put it in last, what you're going to want to again feel on your hair is feel it coating your hair. I always kind of also scrunch it gently into my hair all around. And what I like to see and what I feel is the perfect amount for hair is when you can slightly feel it on your hair and it's also started to really accentuate those clumps that you've created either through defining with like a brush or whatever and it'll further continue to do that so when you see that then you've got the proper amount in your hair and you can stop and then do your drying process from there and then with sprays it's always best to start with a lot less first and then add more as needed and you can even do that with anything else you can start off with a small amount and as you're drying, if it's feeling like you don't have enough in your hair, you can always add a little bit more product while you're in the middle of the drying process and then make sure that you have enough to go on. I have definitely done that before myself. I typically do that more with like the hairspray because sometimes I will hairspray my hair before I diffuse it. So I will spray it really quick. And then if I feel like I'm not getting enough of a cast or enough of a hold and um, I'm worried that my hair is going to frizz up, I'll spray a little bit more on. I'll stop where I'm at and spray a little bit more on. That's always something that you can definitely do. So these are my tips and tricks for helping you to decide how much of each type of product that you're going to need in your hair and how to determine based on your hair's density, your length, your texture, your porosity, the type of product. Um, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of experimenting and playing around. Unfortunately, like I said, I, if I could give you an answer and just say, use that amount, that's all you need every single time. If I could do that, I absolutely would, but I can't because that would be dishonest and that's just not how things work. So your best bet is to learn how to assess the products the way that I've, um, explained in this video and then also to start with the density trick adjusting for length and your um, texture and then also bringing your porosity into it and realizing that if you have highly porous hair that even if it's something that gets weighed down it's not going to get as weighed down if it's highly porous and it needs the moisture or it needs the protein you can always use just a tad bit more than if you didn't have highly porous hair so hopefully you learned a few tips or tricks from this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell while you're at it. 
If you'd like to ask any questions, if you have something that you'd like to see or you just want to say hi, go ahead and leave me a comment in my comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.